Okay, next question from Bo Dozer. How did your training differ from raw to equipped? Oh, thanks, Kilo. <laughs> okay. Um, how did your training differ from raw to equipped? Well, it actually differed from equipped to raw. <laughs> right. Um, and I was training a pretty much strict conjugate west side method, equipped. And whenever I switched to raw, I started working with Jesse Norris and doing all his crazy fucking volume shit. <laughs> that fucking wrecked me in no training time. Training is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't keep up and I hurt my back training without a belt. So I'm like, oh, fuck this shit. So I went back to conjugate. That didn't last very long. Um, the Jesse Norris stuff. I went back to conjugate for everything except for squats. I continued to do like raw volume squats and I just kind of worked up in weight as I got towards the meat. So working backwards from the meat, well, you can message me if you want all the details of my training cycle or if you want me to do a separate video on exactly like how I worked up to hit my total at the LA Fit Expo. I'd Comment be below if you want to hear that video. So I would say um, generally it stayed the same except for my squats. I did more, uh, I, once a week I squatted raw. Um, walked, practicing my walkouts, and uh, yeah, so that's uh, how it changed. Also, I did instead of doing speed bench every week on dynamic effort upper day, I would do speed bench one week, and the following week I would do like raw volume work. And whenever my arm was, I broke my arm. If you guys don't know, I broke my arm uh, benching a few years ago, so I've got a lot of hardware in there. It's really painful to bench raw, so my arm's feeling really shitty. It always feels shitty to bench, but whenever it's like unbearable. I would either put a slingshot on or try and wrap it with a knee wrap or something. But it's hard for me to keep the speed on speed bench day because of the condition it's in. But anyway, so I would do like volume work on the bench one week and then the next week I would do a speed bench. Um, that's So basically I was deadlifting once a week for max effort. I was working up to a one rep max deadlift once a week on a different variation. And when I needed a break from deadlifting I would throw in a good morning variation. So that's how it uh, differed. And now you're starting your career in equipped um, yeah. powerlifting. So tell us how you're going to change your training. <laughs> Today I squatted 366 pounds with reverse micros. You hear that? That was a PR, okay? Um, for the first time ever. So pretty much my training has been just a few reps. Um, yeah, so much lower volume than usual. <laughs> that's awesome. Um... God. <laughs> I know my porn star name. Okay, yeah, Josh uh, Fetzer. <laughs> this is his Instagram handle, but motherfucker, I know who you are. <laughs> A porn star name. Uh, I came up with it earlier today. It's Judy McPrudy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Fucking win. Came up with that from this brain here, which usually doesn't do things, good things for me. <laughs> oh my God. I have no idea what my fucking point is. Gracie thing. Vanassi is a good point. It's thing. Gracie Vanoss. No! Yes! Boss, I asked, like, it would be what? Boss Vanoss. Yeah. <laughs> Boss Vanoss. Boss Vanoss. <laughs> um, whatever you want it to be, Josh, you can pick it. <laughs> um, when is the last? Okay, so Tom, Tom Levesy, something like that. Or Tom Loves. When is the last time you went to Quebec and what did you think of it? The last time I went to Quebec was in December. Actually, it was at the end of November. What did I think of it? It was beautiful. <laughs> a lot more beautiful than I remember it being, just because it's so different from uh, San Diego and I had kind of forgotten what it was like. Well, actually, I went back home uh, once, when was it? In September, uh, during the Olympia week. And um, during that time, I got to spend a lot of time like in the Gatineau's um, on the river at my mom's cottage, and nice. it was beautiful, absolutely breathtaking. So it's, I love Quebec now. <laughs> a lot more that I'm not there. I've been to Quebec <laughs> for a few hours, which I thought it was called Quebec. Well, it probably is, I'm just I'm Canadian. <laughs> I'm, I'm just like, <laughs> you should, you're the real one, the real Canadian. Um, my, my boyfriend is Canadian too, so we had to go to Ottawa for visa stuff. And then went to Quebec for a short period of time, but I didn't really get. I keep forgetting that that he's yeah, from. Yeah, he's, uh, he's Canadian. But wait, he's from. He's from Vancouver. Vancouver that's mm -hmm. right. You know, he's just trying to get that green card, girl. Hey, <laughs> gotta do what you gotta do, right? <laughs> yes. Um, 
<sighs> okay. If it's post max effort lower day and your significant other both lit and you, and you both lit. Wow. <laughs> if it's post <laughs> max effort max effort lower day and your significant other both lift, who is on bottom? I'm always on bottom because I'm a dead fish, so it's like it doesn't matter if it's gonna happen. It's gonna be me not moving at all. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna choose not to answer. That <laughs> um. My sciatic nerve bothers me after I squat. Any suggestions to alleviate that? Well, I mean, I'm not a physical therapist, so I don't like to give too much advice on stuff like that. I mean, find somebody in your area who does like ART and Rolfing and mm -hmm. invest in that. Um, what else? I mean, unless you have something that works good for that. Same exact thing that Gracie says. Um, how does your menstrual cycle affect training, if at all? Do you adapt sessions or cancel a session to accommodate that time of the month? Oh, you can't see. <laughs> I don't even get my period anymore, so she can answer that. <laughs> um, I get mine still, unfortunately. Um, it. I really do try to not give myself an excuse for it. I will say the first day of my period, I do have pretty bad back cramps. So if I'm deadlifting on the first day of my period, I'll maybe adjust it one day or two. Uh, and also I have a problem with um, the pelvic pressure, the pressure on my pelvic floor where I'll pop tampons right out of my pussy. <laughs> it happens. It I happens. coach a lot of girls and I've heard that several times. Um, so I, I'll adjust the session, but I really do try not to give myself that excuse. I only really have the problem on the first day. So other than that, those are my, just back cramps are my only PMS, I guess it's not even PMS, but menstrual cycle problems. <laughs> Okay, Patrick Thomas asks, is it difficult dealing with the obviously manly body powerlifting gives women? Go ahead. Yes, <laughs> does it look like it's really difficult? Because it's so hard when I have to bite off all these boys knocking on my door, you know what I mean? Uh, no, um, yeah, sure, like I'm not the most petite woman in the world, but I also don't want to be. For me, um, other people's standards of beauty are less important than my own pursuit of strength and being a badass and just enjoying my time on earth. So go fuck yourself. <laughs> I, I don't know if you're being sarcastic or not. <laughs> I know. I think it was like yeah. being silly. I think he was being silly too. Yeah. And not, um, but I mean, if somebody was actually wondering that. Um, yeah. Difficult dealing with you, obviously. No, it's, it's not difficult. Yeah. It's not difficult. It's not important <laughs> to me. It's not important. Um, okay. New York City or DC and why? Um, I love New York City because it's the... It, she lives in New York City. I live in New York. I used to live in DC. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, so that was obviously yeah, for you. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, <laughs> I'm like, very random. I love New York because it really is a city where you can meet the most brilliant and unique people that exist in this world, I think. Um, except for San Diego, um, but yeah, I think, you know, there's a lot of variety of people, um, and sometimes you just, like, look at people and you wonder, like, how the fuck are you making it here? So, like, making it in New York is the biggest, like, sometimes most interesting thing about people, because people are doing all kinds of shit, you know? Um, and also, it's like, I have these moments of inspiration where it's like, yep, this is where it fucking happens, man, like, this is where you make it. Um, but also in the same breath, um, the, the quality of living isn't really good. In DC you can have a better... Okay. Um, so yeah, I would say they're different, um, but you have much more 